The Las Vegas Raiders signed talented undrafted free agent safety Isaiah Palomao with the plan of developing him. He's been up and down from the roster to the practice squad since. Meanwhile, Jonathan Abram has struggled to play fundamentally sound assignment sound football. He's been doing that since he's been a Raider, so Deron Harmon has taken his place in the starting lineup and Abram was cut this week. But why was he cut instead of just being a backup? The Raiders have to pay him anyway. Did he get to the point that the new regime just didn't trust him? Or has Palomaro done enough in his development for the Raiders to trust him on the field? He is the one that replaced him on the roster. But is he ready to get into the safety rotation? Let's start with a little backstory on Palomaro because he's not your typical undrafted free agent. He's very talented and he showed that talent at USC. Unfortunately, he blew out his shoulder as a freshman, but he came back and killed it as a sophomore. He had 73 tackles, 5 for a loss, 1.5 sacks, and 4 interceptions in 13 games that year. The next year was the pandemic year of 2020, so he played in only six games. Then last year he was good, but never reached that level he was playing on in 2019. That, his injury history, and the fact that he was 6'4 and only 205 pounds caused him to go undrafted. But at USC, he showed he has that coveted versatility to fit any scheme. He also has that coveted intelligence as he consistently displayed his understanding of route concepts and situational football. The fluidity and loose hips he displayed covering tight ends and slot receivers didn't hurt either. He's also physical and a good tackler. So all the stuff Vinny Bonsignor said about the kinds of players the Raiders want for the future of their defense describes Palomao. As you well know, he has since made the Raiders and he's gone back and forth from the practice squad to the roster, making appearances in weeks 2 and 3 on special teams. So is this call up to the active roster any different? Is he going to play more than special teams? Is he ready? Well, one thing I really like is he's put on a little weight. He's up to 211 pounds now. We'll see how ready he is tomorrow, but for those that want to see it, I attached his player evaluation. A lot of you have already seen it before. Let's start with the bad, his pursuit to the ball. Sometimes he takes the wrong angle to the ball and or he just overruns a play and it costs him. He's actually a good tackler when he's honed in, but those pursuit angles sometimes cause him to miss. Huey's coming out of the left of the screen and he's gonna dive it air. He's gonna completely overrun this one. Coming under control and breaking down would help too. Oh. Palomao is a big hitter, so that's one part of Abrams' game that won't be missed when he's gone. Ooh, it ain't right what he did to this guy. Oh. That flag was bogus. Hitting too hard, 21, defense. Let's see that again though. Oh my goodness. He doesn't just pick on little receivers either. He gets running backs too. Oh. And you know you're gonna get some of this work if you play for UCLA. Oh. Palomao has a reputation for being a big hitter that follows him around. So sometimes, even running backs don't want that work to go out of bounds. Palomao is a playmaker in the box. He has really good instincts in there and you're not going to fool him. He also has good timing as a blitzer off the edge as he comes from the left of your screen here. Here he comes again from the left of your screen. Watch this. Like I said, Palomalu is a playmaker in that box. Interception. And here's a forced fumble coming from the left of your screen. The 
Raider defense can use some turnovers. Another part of being a box safety is man coverage, which he's good at. He retakes the tight end away and the quarterback has to run. Here he's coming over to cover the slot. He's going to stick to him through the scramble drill and the quarterback has to throw the ball away. Here he has the tight end again and he's not having it. Here he has another big tight end. And he's going to reach in with his long arms and poke that thing out of there. Here he is on that big tight end again. The Raiders need him to cover Travis Kelsey like that. Oh, and if you make a mistake throwing his way, the ball's going back the other way. Paul Amal can also do it from the back end. He'll come up to play the run. Watch him come downhill here. That's minus one yard there. If there's any kind of scrum, he's gonna stick his head in there. He's gonna come up and take on the tackle and make the play here. This one, as soon as the running back finds a hole, he's going to be right there. He wants to come up and make the play as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. He's a reliable tackler as a last line of defense when he's under control. That's a very important but underrated part of being a safety. Here he's going to show some wheels and save a potential long touchdown run. We got another touchdown saver here. Here he's going to give his team a chance to make a goal line stand instead of just giving up the score. And here he's not going to stop the long completion but he's going to make the tackle before the receiver reaches the end zone. Again, that is an underrated part of playing safety. Well, Amal can patrol the back end too. If you do catch a ball in this area, he will make you pay for it. He often makes his way to or near the ball and gets his hand on it. He really almost got one here. He's going to show a little range and get to the sidelines and get one here. Of course, being 6-4 has its uses at the end of games and Hail Mary situations. Paulo Mao has some things to work on, no doubt, but I don't see how those things made him go undrafted. He's a playmaker in the box, whether it be tackles for losses, sacks, or forced fumbles. He also has pretty good man-to-man -man coverage skills. With his height and length, he could hopefully give Travis Kelsey some trouble. He can also patrol the back end, so he can be used interchangeably with Merrick if the Raiders like a matchup with him in man coverage. If he cleans a couple things up, makes the team, and gets on the field, he could be a chess piece for Bradley. Thank you for watching. See you next time.